This conference will now be recorded. Sing, oh, sing, my Redeemer, with His blood He purchased me on the cross. He sealed my part. Made the dead and made me free. I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out And yet I will Lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name, oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, oh yes, I will. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. No way. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy. My heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Sort of terrify you that I have zero notes up here, which means it could be five minutes, it could be an hour. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, I was uh, when I was like trying to prepare for this morning. 
uh, I had like a lot of good ideas that I wanted to talk about. And each time that I would write one of those ideas out and kind of work on it, I just didn't feel like it was like the thing that I was supposed to share. Um, and I, I really came down to, uh, man, I think I'm supposed to share my testimony today. And I realized, I think this is about my 10th time being here. And I don't think I've actually ever shared my testimony here. And so um, Holly and I, we just took a group of uh, seven students to Kentucky to a conference. And uh, it was a really good time. We had a lot of fun. Um, but in the actual conference, it was talking about, uh, we learned about like a, how the second great awakening started um, and just like kind of what the word revival meant and what that would look like if we like did that in our own lives and just, uh, yeah, just had that experience here in like our nation uh, today. And um, <clears throat> there's a lot of really good stuff about the conference. Um, but what was really cool at the end of the conference, we were just like all sitting at our table together, just Holly and I and, our, and the seven students. And we kind of just went around the table and just said like, hey, like, you know, what did you like get out of this conference? Or like, what was like the one big takeaway? Um, and I was just really, really amazed that each person, each student um, that we had, um, just got this like really profound, uh, like new desire in their hearts. Um, one of the kids, he, he just became a Christian two years ago. Uh, he said, hey, I had, I've never prayed for someone before, uh, like out loud, like with a hand on them before. I'm um, like, I think God like changed me and like, I wanna be a person of prayer now. And I was just thinking like, man, like two years ago, like you didn't even know who like Jesus was. And now like God is like stirring your heart, like to be a person who like prays for other people. I'm um, like that the same kid had like an experience where um someone came up to him and prayed for him and they said, Hey, uh, like, you know, can I pray for you? And he said, Yes, please. And so they started praying for him. And then all of a sudden he said, Hey, wait, wait a second. Like, how do you know that information? Like I, I've never told anyone that. And she's like, hey, God, like God told me. And so uh it was just a really great experience. And like each student had like a really cool story just like that, of like how God met them. Um, and like had stirred them on to these new desires. Um, later, I was, I was talking with Holly and um, we were just talking about, uh, man, like oftentimes it seems uh, like when we don't hear from God, uh, like we kind of, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I kind of feel almost dead. Uh, and like sometimes I have like these seasons where uh, like I don't open my Bible, I don't pray and, and I feel like that, I feel really bad. Uh, not like guilty necessarily, but just like, ugh, I just feel gross. And, um, and, and Holly told me something that I thought was really good. She said like, you know, often when we like don't experience God, like we, we like go into like these seasons. And so I want to have uh, like these like miracles, like that this student felt, you know, like, hey, I've never prayed for someone before. Now I, I think God is like urging me to be like a person of prayer. Like, I want to have those moments in my life where I experience God. And I think like we all do, we like, we want to experience God. And, you know, sometimes uh, when we aren't doing like those personal like disciplines with God, uh, oftentimes we, we don't hear or see or, or, or feel God. And uh, I just like want to urge us that like, we, we do have those opportunities where we can and go to God and like, he will be there. And I, someone at the conference, they were like giving like a testimony portion and they said, if you want to hear from God, read your Bible out loud. And so I thought that was really funny, but like it was also like really good and really true. And so just when thinking about all those kind of things, um, man, like I want to experience God as well, uh, more so than I do now, more so than I did. Um, and I just want that to continue to grow. Um, and so in, in like preparing for this, um, I found this uh, little excerpt um, and it says, personal testimonies are one of the most influential tools the Holy Spirit uses to stir spiritual interests and point people towards Christ. And so like, I, you know, I think a lot of things, like if I were to come up here and talk about free will, um, someone, I assume either here or online or somewhere, 
uh, they could disagree with me and say, well, Brad, actually, like, free will doesn't exist. It's, it's actually, you know, all predetermined and, you know, you're wrong, actually, and here's some scripture to back it up. Um, but I find that what's really interesting is you really can't argue about my story <laughs> uh, because, like, it's, it's what happened to me and uh, it is what is true, at least in my perspective, of what the events have taken um, across. And so I, I think it's like very rarely, unless you have something that's really argumentative, someone will argue about your own story. Uh, in fact, they're actually more likely to engage with you uh, about your story. Hey, uh, you shared about this. Can you kind of please explain it a little bit further on this detail? Or, um, hey, I have a question about that. Can you, can you answer that? And so I think um, these testimonies that we have actually um, push dialogue um, towards Jesus more, and it's like a more personal level. And so I just want to encourage um, all of us, like the power that we have with our testimonies, um, because like really it's, it's a miracle is what our testimony is. Our testimonies are how God transformed a heart of stone into a heart of flesh. We see like, you know, uh, like Pharaoh, his heart was hardened, um, but we, we want our heart to grow softer, not harder. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to share, um, yeah, my testimony. First uh, John 5.11 says, and this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his son. And so, uh, in the most simplest of terms, that is like what our testimony is, that this life is in his son, um, that we would be um, like in obedience and accordance with Jesus um, which we once were not. Um, in Titus 3, 3 through 7, it says this, For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hopes of eternal life. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, in a nutshell, exactly uh, what I want to talk about is, uh, for those who don't know, I came to Texas Tech uh, actually 10 years ago uh, in, I guess, two months, so the fall of 2012. Uh, in high school, I was like a, a good person, and I had gone to church a handful of times and had different experiences. Um, for those of you who are here, last time I preached, I talked about uh, my experience at Vacation Bible School uh, when I was like probably roughly eight to 10 years old uh, when I uh, kind of first encountered like anything church related and churchy. Um, in that experience, uh, it was actually really terrifying to me and uh, little Timmy uh, accepted Christ and our small group leader said, hey, like kind of the options here is like, if you want to accept Christ like little Timmy, you get to spend eternity in heaven, yay. Um, if you don't, you'll like burn in hell forever. <laughs> And so I was absolutely terrified of God uh, from then on because I knew that I did not know him and I didn't even know if he was real. And so my options were, uh, I'm going to burn in hell for eternity, terrifying, uh, or if he's not real, I will, uh, when I die, I'll be like non-existent and not have a conscience. And that was almost as equally as terrifying, or I could figure out who God was. Um, unfortunately. I really uh, dwelt on like this uh, really uh, tough version of God who uh, like was going to send me to hell, um, but wouldn't do anything about uh, me like reaching uh, like him. And so I really struggled with that for a long time. I was terrified to go to sleep at night because I just didn't want to die because I just didn't know uh, what the outcome would be. And so uh, my senior year of high school, we were all about to go to different colleges and, uh, you know, the friend groups would break apart and we would, you know, maybe see each other, maybe not. 
but towards the end of that last semester, uh, one of my friend's dad, uh, he uh, is uh, a very unique thing that I, I don't hear a lot of people. He is a speaker, um, but he essentially talks about uh, the evidence for God. And uh, so we, for a whole week after school, we'd go to, go to school and then we'd go um, and listen to him. And each day it was about a different topic of why um, God is real. And so it was really interesting because most of my friends uh, were believers, but me and this other kid, uh, we were just, you know, kind of just like in this limbo land of like, I don't know if God is real or not. And uh, I really don't know what to do about it or if I am going to do anything about it, but I'll listen. And so uh, I come from like a very, you know, big science background. Uh, I just love animals and I just think everything about them is fascinating, how they work and um, how they're different and all that fun stuff. And so it really did intrigue me um, from a perspective of like, all right, uh, why does God exist from a mathematical perspective? Uh, I, I never even thought to ask that question. I'm like, why from a um, historical perspective does God exist? And so each day we would go through these different things. Um, and that like really began my process of, of searching for like, okay, well, um, I, I didn't really know what to think about this to begin with. Um, I, I don't even know if like, I, I might've opened the Bible maybe, um, but I really thought it was a, a bunch of stories um, that weren't actually historically correct. And someone just kind of jotted them down. And so um, that really just began the process in my mind of like, you know, what is true and like, how do I figure out what that is? And so I, I ended up going to college at Tech and uh, the summer, that during that summer, uh, there is a incoming camp uh, for freshmen and uh, it is like a Christian thing. And so all my friends were going that, you know, they went to high school, they were going to tech. So I tagged along with them. And uh, there, there was like 600 people there. And I just remember like the first night of worship, uh, like people were like, you know, bawling their eyes out. They were like putting their hands up. Uh, I was like, good, <laughs> you know, like, you know, this, is a, this is a lot of experiencing me. Um, but I remember like the girl next to me, like she sat down and she was like weeping. And there was like something inside of me that I, I couldn't really put my finger on. Um, it's just like, man, like I, I must have been like created for more. And so through that weekend or through that week, um, it was really cool. Actually, one of my friends from high school was uh, one of my small group leaders. And I kind of shared like my, like he shared his testimony with me, which was like the first testimony I've ever heard. And uh, he was like, go ahead and like share your testimony. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, I, how can I share my testimony if like I don't, like I, I'm not sure about the whole God thing yet. Uh, and so I shared a like, you know, if God was real, like this would be my testimony um, at that point, which was really interesting. I haven't heard anyone uh, do that before. So anyway, um, that really just like kind of sparked my curiosity uh, even more. And some of those, uh, fr my friends who were like upperclassmen in college, uh, they went to the Wesley Foundation and they literally harassed me into going. And so I find myself <laughs> uh, at the Wesley, uh, you know, Al's there, uh, all that fun stuff, uh, my freshman year, uh, not having like any background in, in Bible, no background in like Christianity, except from like these few experiences um, where um, like I'm beginning to like, you know, ask like, you know, God, like, you know, what is this? And so um, during that first year, I like I attended and really what I learned was like a lot of like book knowledge. So who was Noah? Wow, I have no idea. Uh, wow, that's really cool. And so uh, that first semester, we are actually going over the meta narrative. So the whole book of the Bible, like, you know, from cover to cover, like here's the general story, um, which was just like really good timing for me of just like, I. I didn't know, I would say like most of those names that were in the Bible. I heard about this guy named Jesus a few times, um, but besides that, I really didn't know a lot. And so that first year, I really just got to learn a lot and I developed some friendships. Uh, fast forwarding a little bit uh, to my sophomore year, um, I met a girl and I had never been in a relationship before. And uh, this girl somehow liked me back. And I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. 
And so uh, that whole semester, I kind of had checked out. Like, I would go to the Wesley, you know, like once a week. I'd do it. It was good. And then I would bounce out. Um, but really, I put, like, my whole life into this uh, relationship where I just, like, I don't know. It was just, like, super pathetic looking back. <laughs> but, like, I, I really, like, was in love. And uh, I just wanted to spend, like, every moment with her. And I really, like, that was my identity. Uh, like, I put all of uh, my eggs in, like, that basket. Um, and so long story short, she... Uh, crushed my heart into one million pieces, and I was really, 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 really sad. Uh, super sad. Sadder than I've ever been. Uh, and I, I just like would cry myself to sleep at night. Uh, just really sad. Um, but that's when I began asking God, uh, God, like, would you comfort me? Uh, and uh, like, hey, like, God would, like, th th like, nothing is going to, like, people are like, oh, you know, like, time will, uh, you know, make it better, uh, but, like, God, in this moment, like, time won't do anything, because, like, I hurt so bad, and so, uh, like, that's where, like, God began, like, meeting me through that situation, um, even though it's kind of, like, looking back, it's really silly, but at the time, it was, like, really, really painful to me um, that God would meet me, like, even, like, in my bedroom, uh, and to, like, comfort me, um, at, at about the same time, uh, one of the interns at the Wesley named Josh, he, uh, I'd known him, you know, for like a year and a half now, uh, you know, just like, hey, Josh, like, oh, hey, Brad, you know, just passing by, not really having a lot of good conversation. Um, but one night I was studying at a place and some Wesley people just happened to be there eating and he comes over to my table and we just sat down and like talked for a little bit. And kind of about like what you know <laughs> what, what's been going on in my life and uh all that fun stuff and so uh, about that time i also started running uh, i had never like done really like anything athletically in my life before then uh and so i started running and uh i'll come back to that part in a little bit but anyway uh, josh said hey brad um i know kind of where you're at now with everything um why don't we meet up and let's just like start talking about this and figuring it all out. I said, all right, let's do it. And so uh, we started meeting up and um, what he would uh, have me do is actually, he would have, he would have me just bring questions that I had. Um, if God is good, then why do bad things happen? Uh, why does God allow suffering? Um, all these really hard questions that um, really don't have a lot of good answers, um, but Josh would just have me bring all these questions that I had until I had exhausted my question pool uh, where I had no more questions. Um, a lot of the times, uh, I would say most of the time, Josh never really gave me an answer, um, but he would help me point to scripture and go, let's, let's see what like, God has to say about that actually. And so during this process, uh, Josh became like a really good friend to me. He became a mentor to me. Uh, but more importantly, I saw like who Jesus was um, through Josh. And um, I think that's like a big part of um, like us as Christians that um, like sometimes the only uh, like picture of like who God is uh, that some people get is, is seeing God through us. And so I'm not really, um, yeah, like really, you know, mess with my mind. Um, and then I remember Josh sharing his testimony to me. And uh, the thing that was different about this was I had never had someone like tell me like everything about them. I had never heard anyone share their deepest, darkest secrets with me. I've never had a person say like, hey, like I'm actually like not a good person. Like here's why. And like give me like hard evidence to be like, yes, you're right. <laughs> you're not a good person. Um, and so it, it really um, was crazy. And some of those things, some of those deepest, darkest secrets, some of those really bad things um, I personally connected with because I um, had also experienced those things or I had done some of those things um, and, I, and I felt like, wow, like, you know, th those things like weigh really heavily on me. And so um, long story short though, but like Josh really showed me like a side uh, and what that side was, was like he showed me who like Jesus was. And so that was like a huge process and um, I remember like I was going to church and, you know, all the pastors say like, you know, like, Hey, you know, we're going to take communion like in a little bit. And they say, hey, you know, the, t the table's open. Anyone can take it. 
um, and we don't really kind of have like a, a Christian card to like punch or anything like that. We're like, ah, like you are a Christian, perfect. Go on, like take communion. Um, but uh, I just like told Josh, I was like, hey, like I'm not gonna take communion until like I really like am about it. Like I don't want to just take this to take it and then like, oh, like sweet, like I'm a Christian, or and pretend like I'm something that I'm not. And so um, I don't really have like a like on this specific date at this specific time, like I met Jesus. But like during this process, I remember uh, like sitting in the pews and one Sunday I said, dang, like I'm, I'm gonna do it, like today's the day. And so I went into communion um, and uh, through that, I have like, you know, chased after Jesus, uh, sometimes really well, most of the time really poorly uh, on, on trying to, um, you know, live a life in Jesus, I think. Uh, and this life is in his son. So yes, uh, through that. And so uh, I remember uh, in this processing time though of like, am I Christian, am I not a Christian? Like this weird buffer. Uh, I remember going up to Al and saying, hey Al, I'm not a Christian, but I am interested in being on leadership team. And he was like, well, Brad, <laughs> in order to be on leadership team, you would have to be a Christian. And I was like, ah, okay. So we had like a lot of conversations and I remember like on our application, I submitted like my, where I was at currently. So I, I, I wrote like another testimony essentially of, hey, I'm not a Christian yet, but like, here's my testimony. <laughs> and then I wrote another testimony of where I would like to be. Um, like, hey, like this would be my testimony. Um, like if uh, like some things were different, uh, like in my faith. And so uh, Al really showed me uh, like a ton, a ton of grace in that. And uh, he didn't like put me in charge of a small group or anything like that crazy. Um, but I got to be like on this small role on the leadership team as not a Christian. Uh, and uh, it's really cool because like Al has like actually like shared that story with other campus pastors um, from all across the nation of the time that he put like a non-Christian on his leadership team. Um, and it worked out for the for good. And so I'm really glad that Al did that. If I was him, I probably would not have done that. <laughs> um, but I, I'm thankful for that. And so, um, but I think some of this time when we shared testimonies, like this is kind of like the part where we end it, where it's like, uh, here's my life before Christ. Here's kind of like what he was doing, like when I was becoming a Christian and now I'm a Christian and like, it's all good. And all right, worship team come back. Um, but, and I, I think just like even looking at like, Christian uh, like circles in the American church, this is kind of like what we want as well. Of We want to count how many people we baptize. Uh, we really like saving people. Um, but after that, we kind of like bounce out because that's when it starts to get really, really difficult in uh, how do we love those people now that um, who have accepted Christ but are still really difficult people who are still struggling with a lot, um, who sometimes say really mean things to pastors and write bad emails. Um, and so, I think it'd be like a great disservice because I, I feel like God has worked in my life um, even more after uh, I got saved. Um, a great work that he did in me bef you know, before and during, um, but and maybe an even better work that he's been doing in my life since then. And so uh, I went on my first mission trip uh, in the winter of 2015. Uh, I went to Mexico. Um, and now I have been, uh, I just went on my 10th time uh, a few months ago. Um, but God really started um, like changing my heart um, inwardly from things that I want, uh, what Brad wants to what does God want. And um, I, I see Jesus in the Bible where um, he connects with God by running out into the wilderness away from everyone and saying, I'm going to go pray to God. Well, he actually doesn't tell anyone. He just does it. And then they're like, Jesus, where were you? And he's like, oh, I was praying to God. Um, and then the next thing that I see in, in, the, in the Bible where Jesus feels close to God is by going and serving people. And, and, and that's really where God has like met me uh, time and time again is how I can give myself up more um, for other people um, so that I can, so they can experience God more. But in doing so, I also experience God more. And so um, really that, that is like what he's been doing the last, uh, you know, seven, eight years um, in my life is um, how can Brad become lower 
and how can other people become elevated? Um, and in, in the conference that we just went to, uh, I'm gonna try to bring it back to some of these stories that at the conference, but we talked about um, empowering others and like in college ministry, uh, I don't know if you, it's, it's really difficult to empower uh, college students who have, uh, you know, 18 hour semesters. Uh, some of these people have literally have like three part-time jobs. I literally have no idea how they're doing this. Um, and then we're like, all right, like we're gonna empower you to be a leader as well for free um, here at church. So that'll be really fun. And so as you can imagine, there is a lot of um, struggle on the student side as well as like on the staff side of like how, how do we reach these kids? <laughs> and I'm like, you want to step into a leadership position? How do we, you know, uh, you know, do that? So anyway, at this conference, um, one of the guys um, from Texas uh, that we we sort of know, he was talking about how do we empower others, and he was talking about this concept that how do we put other people on their platform? Um, so like, if I can serve people really well. How can someone put me into a position where I can serve people the best or, you know, like that? Not to like elevate themselves as like, oh, like they're God on a pedestal, but like how do we put people in their spot and encourage them and say, all right, we're going to equip you. Now you can, like, this is where God is calling you to. Um, even if it looks like lowering yourself. Uh, so for an example, like I'm in charge of all the mission trips. That's what I get paid to do. That's why I get a check. Um, even that, how do I lower myself and put, like say someone's really good at finances. How do I give up that part of my job uh, to, even though I know that they would do it and they could do it well, they might make mistakes, but how do I elevate them up? And so, uh, so empowering others, I think that is like a thing that you know God is really working on in me through uh, through through the Wesley. But I also think it's like applicable to all of us of like where are things in our life that we want to have control. Um, maybe we think we can do it better, and maybe we can even do it better. But in doing so, like we uh, like someone else is missing out on the opportunity to grow and move into their calling. And so I think about that a lot, and that is just something I learned at the conference. Um, but I have uh, two quick things, stories of, uh, that I just wanted to share of like where I've seen God. Uh, and one was uh, right before my second time going to Haiti, uh, sometime in the spring of 2017, and uh, I was at the altar praying, and I said, you know, God, like, just speak to me. Like, I want to hear from you. Uh, and for like the first time, and not in like an audible voice, but uh, in my mind, I had the words, Brad, I've created you to be a helper. This is why I created you. And so when I was talking about these experiences that we have with God, and like when we have these experiences where we're like, oh, like I can really feel God, I can really see God, I can really hear God, um, like that really urges us and pushes us um, into like these seasons where we're like, you know, I'll do anything for God. And, you know, when we don't hear from God, we really are like, man, like, you know, where's God? I, you know, I can't, I don't feel God, so I'm not going to read my Bible. And now that I'm not reading my Bible, I really don't see God. And, you know, downward spiral. But when we get these things, when we really experience God, it really pushes us on. And so that really, like, pushed me, um, like, into a really good trajectory of, like, man, like, God has, like, called me to be a helper. What does that even mean? And like, I think that's right because like, I really like helping people. So that makes sense. Um, and, uh, and then another quick story, I, you know, I was in another one of these seasons where man, I don't feel God, I don't hear God. And I remember one of our interns at staff meeting was like, hey, I had a really cool experience at the underground last week. And I was just praying to God. And I said, hey, uh, uh, God, uh, send Al over and pray for me. And like, I mean, like one second later, Alex places his hand on uh, my friend Alex's shoulder and said, hey, Alex, like, do you mind if I pray for you? Uh, I just feel like God told me to. And, uh, you know, Al prays over Alex. Alex, like, experiences God. Um, and I think that's a really cool story. But I also think about, like, man, like, Al had to be, like, really, like, paying attention and really, like, listening to God in order uh, to do that. And if Al wasn't listening, Al would have, like, missed out on that, but, like, also Alex would have missed out on, like, hearing from God as well. And so 
uh, hearing that story, I'm like, man, like this only happens to like other people and like, like God is there, like I believe him. Uh, but I just don't think like if I prayed the same prayer, like that would happen. So the next Thursday, being the honored person that I am, uh, you know, time of worship, everyone's going to the altar and stuff. And I go, all right, God. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll even be fair. I won't even ask for a specific person, but I'll say somebody. Would someone, you know, I've been to the altar, you know, at that point, like, you know, almost every Thursday for, you know, two, you know, three, four years, you know, I've never had someone come over and pray for me at the altar. Uh, maybe we should fix that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I said, you know, God, all right, like, if, if you are there, if you are, you know, listening, uh, then, like, come and send, like, anyone. It doesn't ha- I'm not even saying it has to be Al. If it's Al, that's cool. If it's Alex, that's cool. But if it's anyone, I just need someone to come and pray for me. And gosh dang it, I felt a hand on me. <laughs> and so I was I really frustrated with God because I was like, dang it. Like he really is like who he says he is and he does answer prayers. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be a punk and be like, ha, huh, I got you, God. Like I knew you weren't listening. Um, but God said like he, he, he does listen. And so, um, you know, I have like a, a hundred more stories that I could share. Um, but I, I, I freaked myself out really bad last year. I went to Panama and I woke up in the middle of the night and there was a bat in my room, like a, you know, vampire, you know, thing. And so, uh, I did the worst thing that anyone could ever do. And that was look it up on the internet, uh, just terrible. And so I was like reading all these stories about, oh, you know, like, that have like really small teeth. So you have like no idea if they actually bit you if like you're asleep, like you might not feel it, you know? And then I looked up all about rabies. I went like on this really huge spiral of like, my conclusion was like, when you go to like, you know, why does my, you know, left <laughs> arm fall asleep? And then you get to the conclusion of like, ah, you're going to die. Um, so that that's essentially like where I was at, where I was like, all right, uh, I feel, I, I think I messed up. I should have like, you know, got shots and all that fun stuff. And so I went and got some shots, uh, but it was like really late in the process. So I'm like, I'm not even sure if they'll work or not. And like, you know, then I like started freaking myself out and like my anxiety, which is also a symptom of rabies, uh, created more symptoms that were also symptoms of rabies. So I was like, check, 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 check. And I was like, all right. My conclusion was like, I was going to die. Um, and so, uh, If you remember, I I said I was going to get back to the running part, and I actually forgot about it until now. So now it's a really good time. But during, uh, you know, meeting up with Josh, uh, I would write, uh, like, a Bible verse on my hand, and I would just, like, memorize it, and I would just, like, go run around tech, like, three miles uh, every night, and I would just, like, read it, and I would, like, memorize scripture through that. So anyway, when I was going through this, like, really scary thing of, like, I might have rabies, and, oh, the thing about rabies is uh, once you have symptoms, you're dead. There's, there's nothing that anyone can do. Uh, I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, like, we'll test you for it. And if it, you know, we'll figure it out. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> That's not how it works. I'm just going to die. Um, so uh, I just had like, you know, incredible anxiety and anxiety caused more anxiety and that caused more anxiety. Uh, and so I did the only thing I could think of and that was to like start running again. And so uh, every night, like, you know, during that probably like three or four weeks, I uh, like was freaking myself out about it. I went back to like my old ways of like uh, writing down scripture on my hand and like a running. Um, but I felt like this really closeness with God um, during that time. And it reminded me of like when I was really small and like didn't have that assurance of like, man, like God, I don't know if you're real. I don't know if you're there. Uh, my options are like hell or non-existence and just like getting to look back of like, well, when I was running this time, I like looked at my hand and I was like, like, I know God's like promises are real for me. And like, even like if I die of this or maybe like I die driving to go get one of my shots, uh, like, I don't know, like we don't know our time that we have here. Um, but like, I know that like God has been like good to me and like God has been faithful to me and like this like assurance that I've like struggled with, like, and, and like I still struggle with it a little bit, but like, uh, like 
it was like radically different from like when I was like eight to 10 years old, like, you know, just like fearful to go to sleep because I didn't want to die to like, man, like, I don't want it to happen. Like, I feel like I have so much more to give. Uh, but like, you know, like if this is like my time, like I'm, I'm confident that like I can, like I'll be, I know exactly where I'm going. And so uh, like, that's really like where God has met me and like how he's like changed me. Um, uh, just like one of the many ways um, but like, you know, it was really crazy having like this experience where I convinced myself, uh, you know, that I was probably going to die. Um, but it, it really got me thinking of like, man, like we really don't know how much time we have left here on earth. You know, it could be literally today. It could be, you know, 10 years from now. Um, but I hope like your testimony is like the same, um, in some of the manners that it was true in mine where like God has been good to you. God has pursued you. Uh, he still wants to be good to you, and he still is pursuing you. Uh, just because you were saved, uh, you were baptized, uh, that wasn't like the end. That was really only the beginning of what God wants to do in your in your life. Um, and, and God wants to bless you so he can bless others through you. Um, and so that's like true of like not just my testimony, but yours. And so I, I, I wanted to give some time um, this morning where uh, I wanted you to look back at your own story with God. Um, and I, I just want you to look and you know, like, man, like God, it was incredibly good in meeting you. Um, God, uh, you know, you didn't do anything where God said, ah, like this person is deserving of love. I'm like, we actually did like the complete opposite and ran, ran the opposite way. Um, but God still chose to pursue us. And so um, I just wanted to give thanks to God this morning uh, for what he's done in my life. But I also want to thank him for what he's done in each and every one of your, your life as well. And just know that like this story is um, incredibly powerful um, where you have met Jesus. Um, this testimony is um, incredible. It says, you know, by the blood of the lamb and of our testimonies. And so it's like, man, Jesus's blood that was, you know, that paid for sin. And the thing that's right after that is, you know, how Jesus has changed us. Uh, those are like the two like big things that like, that like the devil hates. Like, the, I mean, like you just can't stand it. And so just know that your testimony is powerful and, and, the, and the, your story uh, is like a means of grace to tell someone else so that they can know Jesus. Um, I, I forgot to share this part of my story. I'll, I'll make it like as short as possible. Uh, I was struggling with something in my life uh, I heard uh, after I got baptized in Haiti, Al baptized me in Haiti, which was really special. Um, but I heard a story about one of my professors at Tech um, who got fired. And he got fired for not really good reasons, actually really bad reasons. Um, so I, uh, oh, there's so much to the story, but I have to shorten it. But uh, so anyway, I reached out to him and I said, I just sent him a, a message on Facebook. I had no idea if he was going to receive it. I had no idea if he was going to get it, read it. I had no idea. At the end of it, I left my number and said, hey, feel free to reach out to me anytime, you know, praying for you or whatever. And two weeks went by. I literally had forgotten I sent that message. Um, but I got a message on my phone. And I was like, hey, this is, uh, and it was their first name. And I had to like, really like, oh my gosh, like that's, that's like this professor, like that's crazy. And um, I ended up getting to like share my testimony with him um, and just saying like, hey, like, you know, I know that like you, uh, you know, feel really bad about like what happened and uh, like you're struggling and I've struggled with some of those same things and like I wanted you to hear my story. Um, and so like we just got to, like swap stories and it was just really cool because I was just asking for God to like use me um, right before I got baptized. I said, God, like I want you to use not just like the good parts of me, but like Josh. Like he, he like shared it all with me. I want you to use even like those really bad parts for like your good because like it, it can't be good for me because it, it's just bad stuff. But like, can you use that? And so like God met me in like using even the worst parts of me to minister to someone else. And so I just, I, I'm encouraged by that. And I just want you to be encouraged as well where I'm um, like, even if you have some like deep dark secrets, um, like God can and will like use that for his ministry. Uh, you know, all, God uses all things for his good. Um, it, it might be really painful, uh, but like those are like even like things that God can use for his glory. And I, and I can't think of a better thing of like 
like, God, I can't do anything with this. It's disgusting. It's, it's, I don't want it. And God said, well, well, what if I use that, you know, to bring someone else to know and love me? And so I just wanted to give thanks to God uh, for all that he's done in my life. And I hope that you also um, were encouraged and just knowing that your own life, that God um, pursues you and loves you um, with more than you can even imagine. Um, we have one worship song left, um, and during this worship song, uh, we'll be able to take communion. If you didn't take communion or didn't grab one of these on your way in, it's right back in front of Lonnie in a basket. Um, these are communion cups. I'm sure we're all familiar with it. Um, but the bread uh, just represents Jesus's body. Um, it was uh, broken for you and me. And then the grape juice, um, this represents Jesus's blood that was poured out for us. And so uh, Jesus uh, shared about this in the upper room with his disciples. Um, and I find it fascinating that, you know, Judas was also there. Jesus uh, let him, he said, you know, hey, like, you know, J Jesus knew that Judas was going to, uh, you know, deny him and uh, that like he let him eat also. And so um, just know that God uh, loves you and like this, uh, just as a symbol of his, uh, what he did on that cross was to pay for our sins um, so that we might meet him, so we might have a relationship with God where we can then share to others um, about this good news. And so uh, just during this worship song, uh, take that communion. I'm only human, I'm just a man, Lord help me believe in what I believe, and all that I am, strong in the stand. One day at a time One day at a time Sweet Jesus That's all I'm asking from you Just give me the strength To do every day What I have to do just a little sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Lord, help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Do you remember when you walk among men? Well, Jesus, you know, if you're looking belong, that is worse than death. Who should the Lord, for my sake, take me today for time. Sweet Jesus, that's all I ask from you. Just give me the strength to do away for all I have to do. Just a 
God, as we just uh, leave this place today, I just want to give you thanks for all that you've done in our lives, um, how you've just transformed us from the old into the new, and I just ask that we would be able to share that, um, what you've done, whether that's with our family, our friends, our co-workers, um, whoever that may be. Uh, God, uh, what you've given us, I just ask that you would help us give away um, to others who need it. Uh, God, we love you so much. Uh, I just ask that you would be with us um, this week. It's in your name we pray. Amen.